welcome and thank you for inviting me to be here. It's uh, an honor and I have to be very honest in saying that I didn't know much about your organization. Um, organization, I don't know why I said that. But <laughs> or community. A community is a much better word, yeah. And um, I'm kind of taken back as I read the Declaration of Principles as they were spoken out loud, and I had to kind of take a, a stop for a moment and go, well, wait a minute, this is exactly what I talked about in my book. And um, I wrote this book about five years ago, Freedom from Spiritual Suicide. Not a catchy title. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people and originally it just said spiritual suicide. They didn't put the freedom from in front of it. Um, and there are a lot of people that struggled with the title. It's like, ooh, I don't want to read about suicide. And I understand that. And this principle, number seven, that says we affirm the moral responsibility of individuals and that we make our own happiness or unhappiness as we obey or disobey nature's physical and spiritual laws. That's what I was writing about. And when I came to writing this book, there was no doubt about it. Um, I had struggled, as we all do in life, with various challenges. And physical suicide was often on my list of things to do. Which seems, I, I know I'm making light of this, but I don't mean to. But I really did attempt suicide in other times. And when I finally grew out of that, that phase of my life, I thought, oh, I've made it. Yay, I'm not doing that anymore, so things are good. And then I realized that there's something bigger. And while I may not have been dying on the outside, there was a part of me that was dying on the inside. And that was the journey. And I think that is the journey, I believe, for all of us. And so what I came to was that how often we're killing our own spirit, even when we say negative things to ourselves that nobody else can. When we don't take care of ourselves, when we don't love ourselves enough to take the very best care of ourselves, we're killing our own spirit. And to me, that is unacceptable. It's like, knock it off. We need to stop this. What's it going to take for us to love ourselves enough that we don't criticize ourselves for the things we've done? That we forgive ourselves, we forgive other people in our lives. And uh, that we recognize that we came here for a very good reason. I can't tell you how many times I've had clients, uh, students, whatever, say, I didn't want to come here. I was forced to come here. This is the last time I'm going to be here. I'm going to get it right so I don't have to come back. <laughs> like, this is the bad place to be. And it's like, really? What if this is the gift? What if this is what it's really about? What if this is where we truly can be our greatest, is to show up and do what we said we would do? And how many of us renege on our original agreement and start doing unhealthy things? Uh, I don't know. I think it's probably the biggest lesson we all have is to be kind to ourselves. I I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and they said, what are you, you know, what are you really about right now in your life? What's going on? I said, you know, I really do think my mission is to figure out why we are so unkind to ourselves. Why do we do that? It's just it makes me so sad that we can believe that we're not good enough. And once we believe we're not good enough, we do everything in the world to prove it. Because we love to be right. We'd rather be right than we'd rather be wrong. And we go, see, I knew that was going to happen. See, I knew that. See? And it's like, really? That's what we need to do is to be right that something's wrong with us? And what if nothing's wrong with us? 
I have this sense, this belief, that when we decide we're not good enough, we decided it actually very early on, that when we took on physical form, there was a sense of separation from the spirit. And because of that, many of us took on that we weren't good enough to stay in spirit and that this was the sentence we were given. And because of that, everything seems to be out of sync in some way. And we're always wanting to be back in spirit, or not we always, but many of us, you know, think, well, you know, that's a better place to be. And so some of us don't even stay in our bodies. We don't stay present to our physical bodies, and we want to be up in the, what we call the ethers or spirit all the time, because that's where it's happening. And it is happening. But what if, if we're supposed to bring whatever that is here to the physical world and, and live it more fully in a physical way instead of just in our mind? What can we learn from spirit that we can bring into this dimension? Um, it's almost like there's this judgment, maybe not so much in this community, because I have a hunch people are very highly evolved. But there's a lot of people out there that are diagnosed with ADD. And I think sometimes that's because they're wanting to be in spirit. And they don't know how to be in the physical world. And we're afraid to be grounded in this world. Like it's not as good as, it's not as evolved, it's not as loving. And it can be. And I think that's our job, is to bring spirit here and not disconnect the two of them. I am very blessed. I get to do my work every day. And I feel like I have the best life of my life. Does that mean every day's good? No. I just thought I would really like to <laughs> renegotiate that agreement. But in general, I really do feel like I have a very blessed life. And sure, there's some pieces that I'd like to have better. But the beauty of it is, that I get to communicate, I get to be with, I get to be surrounded with like-minded people, like the community that you have. And that's such a blessing. And I think so often, when we have that, that sense of spirit, that connection, we can't always tell people about it. Because not everybody's gonna understand. And they think we're the weird ones. And that, you know, there's something wrong with us, and maybe we should be locked up, or whatever the laundry list of things are. And, you know, how many of us have been called crazy? <laughs> I have a joke. Well, never mind. I'll get to that joke. Um, <laughs> I have a joke about that, but I just say that would maybe not a good one to tell tonight. But, so, what is it that keeps us from loving ourselves enough to be so good to ourselves. You know, how many of us were taught better to give than to receive? Like one's better than the other? And quite frankly, you can't have one without the other. If you're gonna give, you gotta have a receiver or it doesn't happen. But we have a tendency to go around saying we're supposed to be very good to everybody and we'll take care of ourselves later on. Or, or what happens is we're so good to other people and when people aren't good to us, we get very angry. Because, wait a minute, I've been there for everybody. Who's going to be there for me? And we're supposed to be there for us. And if we're always giving away to others, what's left to take care of us? And it doesn't mean that we aren't generous and that we aren't kind and that we aren't loving to anybody and everybody who can be. But it's also learning to set boundaries. And I heard somebody say no to something earlier this evening. I don't even know what it was. And I thought, whoa, isn't that wonderful? Say no sometimes. <laughs> it's okay. And it's a complete sentence. 
It doesn't need an explanation. No is lovely. To be able to set a boundary and say, no, I can't do that right now. What would it take for us to say no to some of the harmful behaviors in our lives? Harmful behaviors can be things such as the foods we put in our bodies, the chemicals that we put in our bodies, but it's also the negative thoughts we put in ourselves. And how many times have we criticized ourselves today? We looked in the mirror, we saw another wrinkle. <laughs> Where did that come from? Or we try on some clothing that doesn't fit quite what it used to. Where did that pound come from? And we don't usually go, oh, I just love your body just the way it is. We usually are criticizing. And to me, like I said, that is really killing our spirit. Killing that spirit inside of us because we're constantly putting ourselves down. Would you do that to your children? Probably not. But we do it ourselves and seem to think that's okay. We need to act as it should be for everyone, not just the children, but for ourselves. I could talk about all kinds of things, and I could give you some of my, my principles. These are the ones I kind of thought of when I was writing this book. And as I was writing this, again, like I said, feeling not good enough was the most important thing. And some of the other principles that came out of this as I was writing this was that I believe that God doesn't play favorites. And I think sometimes we think God does. That God hands out gifts to some people and not to others. So we become envious of other people. And again, when we become envious of other people, in a way, we're basically saying we're not good enough. And it's like, what if? It's about really taking responsibility. We have to take responsibility for ourselves, and I think so many times we're waiting for someone else to show us how to do that. And when taking responsibility isn't always easy. Sometimes you gotta look at your junk and your stuff. And that sometimes is not a pretty picture. You know, it's like, ugh, not, not fun. And what would it, what permission do you need? What do you need to do? What do you need to hear that you would be willing to take responsibility for that? Now, that doesn't mean abusing, you know, those kinds of things to yourself, but it means about saying, okay, I get it. How am I not showing up, and what would it take for me to show up? A lot of the work that I do came from the world of hypnosis. And in this community, hypnosis would probably be a normal word. In some communities, hypnosis is evil. Um, it's the devil's playground, or some other lovely phrase that I've heard over the years. And it's really unfortunate, because I think we're, I mean, we all do it all the time. Hypnosis is a natural thing. And for me, it was the gateway for me to understand spirit. And what came out of my work was a tremendous amount of people channeling. Um, and my opportunity to be uh, at the feet, sitting next to individuals who were communicating with spirit in such a profound way that I couldn't help but learn the lessons. And so for me, facilitating an experience with a client is spellbinding and eye-opening and has been my greatest teacher of understanding what spirit is about because I hear the same things over and over again. And they don't know each other, my clients don't know each other, and they're all saying similar things. You hear the same thing in that time. You go, wait a minute, there's got to be something to this. There's got to be something to this. And so in that, I I truly believe that uh, there are things that go bump in the night, 
not everybody wants to talk about those kinds of things. And I, I joke sometimes I'm the hospice worker of the ethers. <laughs> <laughs> that I, and, and one of my great passions is to work with um, spirits that have gotten stuck, that haven't transitioned fully. And for a lot of people, that's real scary work. That's, um, well, it's described in many ways. For me, um, it's just a soul that's confused, that doesn't understand, and it's like the bully on the playground. And my job is to love them home, not to get mad at them. And it has been sometimes the most incredible work to work with those souls that are stuck, for better way to say it, and be of service to them when they're transitioning. And so often what I've learned through this process is the reason why they didn't fully transition is the fear of judgment. That nobody really loved them enough and that they wouldn't be welcomed that there would be somebody there to judge them and send them to, into eternal hell or whatever you want to call it. I think hell's here on earth. I'm not sure it's another place. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and for me to be of service to help and assist that spirit home through the client, through my client. I'm not there. My clients do the majority of the work. I'm just asking a few questions. And in that process, I have been humbled and touched in ways that are very hard to explain sometimes. And I just feel so privileged that I've been allowed to do that work. And the fact that this is a common, I'm going to guess a common topic here, right? Pretty much that you all understand that there's something on the other side. And I'm not sure if we even want to call it the other side. It's just a little different. and that you accept that and it's not fearful for you that's what I'm, I'm going to make some assumptions here but I think based on what I'm reading in, in your materials that it's something that's pretty normal and I love that so I'm in the room full of a whole bunch of crazy people I'm not even <laughs> talking about it. so I'm thrilled that I can you know talk about this stuff I mean there's no doubt about it there are a lot of people that would love to lock us away because we or that we are crazy for talking to people that we can't see. So part of what I wrote in this book too is it's worth a lot. And that we gotta kind of learn a lot of this stuff, guys. Life is not always fun, and it's when we can find the humor in it, I think is the blessing in it. Because I take it so seriously. I take it so seriously. In the end, I hope I'm laughing as I go out, whatever that is. Laughing and dancing by the guy. Thank you. Thank you.